So we've got a look at some new Sora capabilities. And no, I don't have a release date yet for you. But some of the things that we'll be looking at here today, including video inpainting, kind of, uh, really showcase some fascinating potential. And more than that, I do think that it has some ramifications for Sora's integration into Adobe's Premiere. Plus, I've got some details on how long it takes for Sora to render a video. Okay, let's dive in. Kicking off, Sora is apparently capable of in-painting, well, to a degree at least. This comes to us via Sean Ralston. I did upscale the video in Topaz to 1080. Uh, the initial source video was at the very strange 576p. So obviously what we have here is four videos with swapped out prompts. The first one is a 30 year old man in a gray suit, really should have been a blue suit. Uh, the second video being a woman in a gray suit and 60 year old man with a white beard in the bottom left and an industrial metal robot not in a gray suit in the bottom right. Now, a few things to note is that this isn't like true in painting because the backgrounds do change. But what's fascinating to me is the fact that the camera moves are all pretty identical. So this really is more about rendering in a certain style. And then by changing the prompt, you can actually change out the focal point or focal character. The differences are pretty minute in all honesty. Uh, like as we can see, the dumpsters all change uh, in the various shots. Uh, the graffiti on the walls change as well. But for the most part, the action of each of the characters pretty much takes the same path and the, you know, the camera move is pretty much identical. If you've been following the channel for a while, you'll know that I can often be pretty critical of Sora. That said, don't take that to mean that I'm also not blown away by it. The lighting consistency on all of these characters is really, really remarkable. The reflections in the puddles in the alley are kind of like stunning, really. Now, of course, Sora's big problem is the fact that there is no character consistency. So we could take any one of those four characters and then, you know, have them turn out of that alley and onto a city street. But that next generation would not contain an exact copy of that same character. That said, something that has gone kind of under the radar is the fact that Sora apparently can do image to video. In fact, we've actually seen this from OpenAI in this Dolly 3 generated image of a Shiba Inu wearing a beret and a black turtleneck. And I can tell you one thing, even though that dog is AI generated, he is still a good boy. And indeed, we do get a sore output of our Parisian Inu. I will say it does have that kind of typical image to video issue of being slightly softer than the input image. But in terms of kind of that canine acting, I think it does a pretty remarkable job. It's funny because this is sort of like an updated version of our typical image to video, like character slightly parallaxing and turning to the left. It just looks a lot better. Speaking of capabilities that I think have been overlooked since the initial announcement, there is also the ability to extend clips either backwards in time or forward in time. The example in this was this like train car in San Francisco that all three videos look like they're taking place in different situations, but uh, you'll note that they all end at the same place. So this is actually extending in reverse. The other interesting note with this one is that Sora can apparently do text, although it does have problems with spelling, but I, you know, so do I. Uh, as we can see here, there are three instances of the title card San Francisco, but of course, right above it, it says San Francisco. Now you might be wondering why we haven't seen anything in that image to video category uh, in any of the larger projects that Sora has released. That would be things like the Shy Kids Airhead short film that was released recently or August Camp's World Weight music video. The reason for that, according to an unnamed source, is the fact that OpenAI isn't actually allowing those early beta testers to use the image to video feature. Now, why that is could range from technical issues to, you know, obviously safety issues, uh, but it also does have some interesting ramifications in terms of Sora's integration into Premiere. Obviously, there was the recent announcement that that Firefly video will be coming to Adobe Premiere. Uh, but alongside that, they also flex some integrations with Pika, Runway, and OpenAI's Sora model. I tend to watch these kinds of reels very, very closely because you know the messaging here is obviously very, very thought out. Uh, it's a lot of times very telling what they show you and what they don't show you. In the Sora example, we definitely see things that are added as B-roll clips, not generated extensions. While the video extension features were obviously showcased utilizing both Adobe's new Firefly model and in Pika. And while I am speculating, it's pretty logical to conclude that the way that this model 
model works is by taking the final frame of your input video and then using that as a input image to generate the rest of the video. So obviously knowing that Sora is capable of doing image to video, it does beg the question, will we eventually see this in Premiere? We did get some more interesting Sora news coming out of a music video directed by Paul Trillo for a song called The Hardest Part. The video has a storyline where we sort of track this couple in high school, uh, traveling with them in an infinite zoom into adulthood and eventually parenthood. Paul leaned pretty hard into the hallucinogenic aspects of generative video, and the end result has kind of like this very dreamy, surreal, kind of ethereal quality to it. But another point of interest for this video is that unlike the Shy Kids Airhead short film, which did utilize After Effects for compositing, uh, from what I can tell, Paul actually just used straight cuts here. So there is no additional VFX work done, and this is pretty much like Sora out of the box. That said, there is still a ton of editing. Uh, Paul recently talked about his shot ratio in which he said, I think for this project, I generated almost 700 clips to make the video. And I think I used about 55 or 56 of them. So I calculated it and it was 10% of this stuff that actually made it into the final video. He also went on to say, generations with Sora can take anywhere from 15 minutes to one hour, depending on how much you're using it how long your clips are, and how big of a resolution. Now, as for the video itself, I've watched it like 10 times now. Uh, I am actually a pretty big fan of it, although obviously it does have its issues. Again, character consistency is a problem. Even from shot to shot, you know, we have our character here, but then in the next shot, you know, his hair has clearly grown quite a bit. In the next shot, our guy still has kind of the hair helmet going on, but you know, his face does not quite look like the same character. My guess is, is that Paul utilized, you know, a prompt structure here in which he was calling out, you know, whatever characteristic details over and over again, this ended up turning into probably the Sora slot machine. Likewise, our gal can tend to be a bit inconsistent, but I mean, obviously with the Merida-esque hair, uh, she's very easily identified. I should go watch Brave again. It's been a while since I've seen that. And obviously being AI video, you can end up with some pretty, you know, surreal aesthetic choices such as this car. Though I will say that maybe like on the third viewing of this, it did suddenly connect with me that Sora does have this kind of connection to Mid Journey V4. I've said many times in the past on the channel that V4 does have like this kind of gritty, surreal, quality that I've always really appreciated and I actually very much see it in Sora here. And from a traditional filmmaking standpoint, Paul's choice in kind of letting Sora do its thing and leaning into the weirdness, uh, I think ends up resulting in some pretty amazing shots. Uh, think about like a shot like this done practically where you're going down a road, you then enter a car facade with actors in it, do a fly through and end up in a neighborhood street. Uh, I'm not saying that that shot is impossible to pull off practically, but it's pretty impossible to do at a smaller scale budget. Another shot that I just found incredibly fascinating was the Hall of Mirrors uh, segment where as we're walking through, our main character actually appears in the reflection, like as if he's on the other side of the mirror. Uh, I don't think that was probably prompted for, that feels like something that Sora decided to make up, um, but I mean, fits with the overall narrative. And I mean, it's, it's just kind of a really cool and interesting idea. The other thing that I noticed that was just kind of cool and creepy and weird is that uh, faces actually appear in each of like these kind of washing machine things. Is it perfect? It is definitely not. Is it interesting? I mean, your mileage may vary, but I find it endlessly so. And listen, I know that every time, you know, we talk about Sora, there's always like a bit of salt at the fact that, you know, we don't have access to Sora. But, you know, like I always say, like, don't let that stop you from making your own thing. Blaine Brown recently experimented around with that kind of like infinite zoom nostalgia kind of vibe and came up with this utilizing Gen 2. So, you know, it all still can be done with what we currently have available. And it really does just come down to what idea are you trying to convey? So that's it for today. I know, kind of a quick one. I just sort of wanted to showcase the latest happenings in Sora. But if you have some time, you might be interested in this next video. Didn't get a lot of love, but I think that there's some really interesting stuff in it. I thank you very much for watching. My name is Tim.